<laughs> oh, yay. Here we go again. <laughs> Hi there. Welcome back, everyone. And yeah, I know it's not Wednesday. I kind of uh, got the urge to do this live um, based on the title of this video. So here it is, uh, Sunday evening. And well, Happy New Year. This is the uh, first one of these uh, videos we've done uh, for the year 2021. <laughs> 2020 is behind us, thank goodness. I know everybody's had some real fun times during 2020, and we are still feeling the after effects of it. And that, quite frankly, is uh, what I've got here. Uh, in a way, this is an after effect of um, the uh, 10th anniversary celebration that I had been doing through the course of 2020. As I'd mentioned, that, that was pretty much the 10 year anniversary of everything for me, especially when I caught the cooking bug and cooking cast iron for the first time. And this is <clears throat> what, uh, this is the last of those 10 year anniversaries, I think, um, because uh, in January of 2011, I had, uh, again, only just re caught the cooking bug less than a month uh, previously, maybe about two to three weeks previously, and I was learning a lot about this cast iron stuff. I had a cast iron pan. I was really enjoying it. My parents had given me an enameled uh, cast iron grill pan for Christmas, <laughs> which uh, I have to say I do not have now. It is one of those pans that I eventually got rid of because really I didn't use it. I mean, an enameled grill pan, really I did not find much use in it. <laughs> However, <clears throat> I started looking around thinking what else I might want to get for cast iron, and <clears throat> I decided to use a uh, $50 um, Amazon gift certificate that I had been given as a Christmas present for Christmas of 2010. And I got the very first piece of cast iron that I had uh, ever, well, purchased or otherwise acquired for myself. And it turned out to be this, which I have uh, uh, used in many videos. So really anybody who's seen my uh, ch channel should be uh, pretty familiar with that. And that, of course, is the Lodge 14-inch cast iron wok. Um, yes, I got this in January of 2011, and it has been a fixture on my stovetop. I use it uh, practically every week because stir fries are a lot of fun. You get a lot of use out of this. And if you do not have a cast iron wok, I highly recommend you to do not to run, no, not to walk, but run and get one does not even have to be a heavy cast iron wok like this one. Um, I'm, this is, I really enjoy using this one, though, especially because all I have here is a cheap electric stovetop. And um, you can get into the difference between uh, stir-frying on an electric stovetop, which is nearly impossible, and stir-frying on a gas stovetop, which is much better. And even that is not really... Uh, does not even come close to the uh, blasting temperatures you can get at a uh, Chinese restaurant. However, this cast iron wok certainly helps to make up for it. <laughs> okay, I'll get into that in a minute. Ah, William Hurt, White Lines Keith. Um, uh, let me see. Sean Caldwell, Raymond. Oh, no sound, you said? No sound? Okay. Oh, oh good now. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, I'm pissed with the idea of pulled pork in the tortillere. Well, I'm glad you like that. I certainly did. <laughs> uh, your 2011 walk needs a nickname. Stumpy has one. Yeah, I never did really uh, give a name to my walk. And uh, for whatever reason, even though even though there is something special about this walk um, as well that's hidden underneath, uh, if anything, I guess I could really call this my chaos walk because um, – <clears throat> a few years ago, I uh, the uh, seasoning was actually starting to, to peel off on this, and I took the time to completely strip the wok and re-season it. And when I uh, stripped off the seasoning, I did find, lo and behold, my use and overuse and abuse of this wok had actually created a star of chaos in the very center, in the sweet spot. Um, as it turned out, really, it's uh, that has to do with the way 
the this uh, the actual metal was uh, injected into the mold, and uh, because I had put additional stress on the walk, the stress points actually could be seen, and it actually turned out to be a, an eight-pointed star of chaos, <laughs> which has since been seasoned over, so now we can't see that anymore. But yes, it has a hidden, I guess you could say, magical symbol. <laughs> um. <clears throat> but yes, uh, yeah. Anyway, I really, really love this walk. Um, I, I learned a lot about cooking on this walk. I learned a lot about stir fries on this walk. And I learned how to really abuse my cast iron on this walk. Because this is a large cast iron walk. It weighs, what is it, something like seven pounds or more, I think. Um, and it has a very, very thick bottom so that it can stand on the... Uh, stand on this uh, on a flat uh, stove top. And yet, thanks to my abuse of this wok, this is actually a spinner. I heated this wok too high so many times that I actually did produce a dimple like a warp on the very bottom center of the uh, wok. Um, as it turns out, of course, for, um, the only disadvantage of that is that, again, it does not flip, sit flat on a... Uh, flat surface uh, because as far as cooking is concerned there's actually been very little uh, problem with that because as you know what warping can do to a cast iron pan is it can create a hot spot in the very center of the pan yet with a wok that's what we want that's the sweet spot we want that hot spot in the center of the pan so in that respect i was lucky uh, in that i had actually done that to this and not uh, other pans <laughs> so because of this i'm still using this walk and i'm very happy to uh, have uh, used this uh, for the past 10 years and rather than go on and on and on about it let's actually get some cooking done what can I say? I mean, we got ourselves, we're going to be doing a nice simple stir fry here. I really would not be surprised if this video does not last what's more than an hour, which is what the uh, previous one seemed to have been doing. So let's uh, break out some good old uh, genuine Chinese stir fry oil, which is peanut oil, soybean oil, sesame oil, um, and I, as you can see, I can't even uh, read the actual title of it, but this is real... Um, Chinese uh, stir fry oil, no question about that. And so all we have to do is get this thing uh, nice and hot. Like they say, hot wok, cold oil, food won't stick. And that, by the way, is a really, really useful piece of advice when it comes to cooking and cast iron in general. I found it's really good to do just that. Keep your cast iron dry. And then add your oil to the uh, hot pan. Let the oil heat up for about a minute or so, and you will have a uh, nice nonstick cooking surface. Uh, this, yeah, I'll get into uh, this a very special uh, wok spatula that I found at Brimfield a few years ago as well. Um, but anyway, yep, yeah, stir fries. Oh, I mean, if any, I mean, I'm really hoping all of you have done at least a few stir fries only because they are simple, they're cheap, and they are a lot of fun, whether you use it in a wok or a cast iron pan. So, uh, Happy New Year is Peg Tooth. Does a cast iron wok have any advantage over carbon steel? Um, hard to say, largely because this is not a thin and light traditional uh, Chinese wok. I'm thinking that if you were to be doing a very thin walk over a uh, really, really hot gas stove or flame, probably a carbon steel walk may actually be better because it transfers the heat a little faster and a little easier than cast iron. Because, yeah, that is the thing about cast iron, as you know. I mean, it holds on to heat. It has heat retention more than actually pet, more than uh, heat conduction. And so uh, that means this thing gets hot and it stays hot, which is great for cast iron cooking. If you want real temperature control for a wok, you may want to go for one of the uh, carbon steel ones. I would, yeah, and I'm coming right out and say it because, yeah, I would rather tell the truth, even if it goes against this uh, little cast iron obsession I've built up over the uh, past 10 years. <laughs> 
However, for a stove top like this one, as I mentioned, an electric stove top, I would really recommend giving this a try and looking into a thick and heavy cast iron wok for precisely that reason, the heat retention. That is really what you need if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, stir fry on an electric stove top because a thin wok simply will not work right on a... Uh, on a, a thin electric stove top. You just can't get the, uh, it just can't pass in the, the right kind of heat to it. So we've got our, uh, uh, we've got our oil heating up and I'm going to start out with some uh, pork. Uh, this is one of the last of those pork chops we made last week. Um, and I've simply cut it up and coated it in uh, cornstarch. And away we go. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, well, just make sure that these things are uh, well cooked. Then I will take it out of the out of the wok, and then from there go in for the rest of the stir fry. So I know a lot of stir fry recipes say to add your seasonings first, but I find if you add your seasonings first, they tend to burn. So um, my habit has been to do just that to uh, do the heavy foods, especially meat, do that first. And then once that is done, I will remove this and then get down to uh, cooking the uh, seasonings and the rice. But anyway, there's really, no really nothing to this. Um, although I know that it, especially, uh, as I said, because this is an electric, electric stove, and even though I am using a cast iron wok, it is still going to take a lot longer than it might do at a uh, restaurant where they've got these really get, jet burner type of uh, gas stoves, the kind that can that would be able to do even pork like this in like maybe a minute or less. I can't do that, and it is going to take several minutes just to do this pork. So yes, even for a stir fry um, on a uh, cast iron on an electric stove top, even with cast iron, you do need patience, but Fortunately, I hope I've learned patience because slow and slow is really the way to go when cooking in cast iron. And in addition to this, we, all we really need to do otherwise is throw in some salt. And okay. Oh yeah, no, no, we're good. Yeah. And some white pepper. You get white pepper all the time at Chinese restaurants, but believe me, uh, if you have never used white pepper in home cooking, you will not regret it. White pepper has this wonderful savory, what can I say? You know, it, it's, it's a type of pepper and it's not quite the same as black pepper. It's also one of the secret ingredients, by the way, in fried chicken. So there, again, is another reason to give white pepper a try. And let's see what we have here, meanwhile, while we're waiting. Uh, okay. Okay, that's not going to work. There we go. Sorry about that. A uh, bit of feedback there. And I might get a cast iron wok too someday. I certainly do recommend it. I mean, I know you can do a lot of things with a skillet than you can do with a wok. I just feel that for stir fries in particular, uh, a wok is, well, really, it's better. Is this too much oil? Mm, I would not disagree. I do not think so. Because, again, stir fries, usually you, what you really are doing like this is a, a kind of deep frying. And besides... Uh, that we're not done with this. As I said, once this pork is done, then I'm going to throw in my other seasonings, including the rice. So, yeah, it's like, so this oil, I don't feel there's too much oil here. I judge the meat being done, especially something like pork, when you can easily cut a piece of, a piece of the meat in half with your spatula. That is not happening yet. So we still need to be a little more patient. And my roommate Jamie sends her best wishes. She's feeling a little under the weather tonight. No, not COVID. Don't worry. We are, so far, we have been doing our best to avoid that. 
Although I do understand that uh, recently one of our neighbors, unfortunately, her uh, father or father-in-law, stepfather. Ouch. Yeah, my very much my condolences to them. Uh, again, our next door neighbor, there, uh, her, uh, both of her uh, step parents got uh, came down with COVID. Oh, her mom came down with COVID. Her mom and her stepfather, and they were both in the hospital. Her mother recovered and uh, came home. Her father and stepfather, unfortunately, did not, and he did pass away. So. Yeah, I'm uh, obviously this is a cooking channel and not really going to, uh, you know, not really going to spend the entire channel talk talking about this. I can only, of course, uh, provide my condolences and a reminder that we are unfortunately not out of the woods yet as far as this is concerned. Please be careful, everyone. Wear your mask, it's not only COVID. Oh, you yes, know? yes. No, wear I'm your sick now. You yeah. Know? Wear your mask, definitely. Yes. All right, and that's uh, all we'll say about that. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Nice to say hi. <laughs> is Raymond, is sesame oil different than the oil you are using? Yes, sesame is a different uh, kind of oil, and I do have some of, of that as well, and I'm going to be tossing that in with the rice. This is, as I said, I picked up, this is like your typical generic uh, Chinese stir fry oil, which is mostly peanut oil, which is nice. It does have some uh, soybean oil mixed in with it. Yeah, peanut oil is uh, probably about the best there is for uh, doing stir fries. Although I know peanut oil can be expensive, and really there's nothing wrong with doing a uh, stir fry with regular uh, vegetable oil, but I don't recommend olive oil. Olive oil really is not that great for stir frying because, you know, you have to get the temperature up really, really hot. And that's really more than uh, olive oil can, uh, can stand, unfortunately. And so uh, I'm trying to, are you trying to mimic New England Boston style pork fried rice? Very dark fried rice. Well, my fried rice has tended to uh, be uh, kind of dark, yes. I can't... I, wouldn't even know to, about a New England style. I have I have eaten in Boston's Chinatown a number of times. Love the food there, um, and it was there really that I had the best uh, fried rice I had ever had in my life. In Boston's Chinatown, there's um, this particular little um, little place there, and it's called the Hong Kong Eatery. It looks like a hole in the wall, really nothing special on the outside, except for the fact, of course, that it has a lot of poultry, ducks and the like, uh, hanging out to dry right out in the uh, storefront window. Uh, but I went in and the food was really, really good. And I had some, as I said, some fried rice that was about the opposite of any uh, takeout fried rice I had ever had. It was white. It had a sweet gingery uh, type of flavor to it. It was light. It was, it was fluffy. I loved that fried rice, uh, which is actually kind of the opposite of pretty much what you were saying about New England style fried rice. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Like, it, like in any town, there are a couple of um, Chinese buffets and a lot and a number of Chinese restaurants, so called. Oh, we're getting close to that time. I'm able to uh, cut the uh, meat in half. It seems like there we go. And when we cut the meat in half, that means we should be done with this first part. And this coating here seems to have come off on its own. Uh, maybe I didn't do it right. Well, that's all right. We we can just eat that. So we are off to. We're done with the first part. Hot. Do, 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 do. A little bit of the cornstarch still in this dish, but that'll be okay because I'll take care of that when we return it to the pan. All right. Anyway, as I said, I think what you just said now may be the first time I actually heard of Boston or New England style fried rice. <laughs> so that was actually very nice of you. Thank you. <laughs> 
Okay, now having done that, let's get into some other spices, such as some garlic and ginger, and some onions. And I've got to keep this cornstarch stuff from sticking to the pan. Well, that, that shouldn't be too difficult. Fortunately, this thing is hot enough here that this will still be done very quickly. Of course, that's the idea of stir fries. You want it to be done as fast as you can. Still, it's doing nicely, I think. Give it another few seconds. Ah, uh, you want a high smoke temp oil for stir fry. Olive oil isn't one. Boiler honky dude, exactly. I'll use avocado oil with my stir fry. Add sesame oil at the end. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like a plan. Cut meat in half serves more guests. Well, there is that too. I like adding green onions. Oh yeah, I look for some green onions tonight. To be honest, uh, regrettably, I was out of them myself. Uh, I stopped by a uh, local. Um, actually like a Vietnamese uh, market uh, within walking distance looking for green onions. Did not find it. However, on the other hand, I did find a nice pack of um, what appears to be a combination of shredded carrots and I think daikon radish. So in it goes. So all we really need to do now is toss it around until this gets uh, fairly well cooked. And then comes the rice. Yeah, this is, as I said, is a, a pretty easy stir fry tonight. But still gives the chance to talk about this uh, wok, which, yes, is by Lodge Cast Iron. And, and again, it's 14 inches in diameter, a very nice size. Um, I know within the last... What was it? Like about the last three years or so, Lodge actually finally came out with some smaller size walks. They call it the Lodge Mini Walk. I think there's one that's about nine inches in size. and might even be one that's about 10 inches in size. Um, they had past tense. They had also produced a 12-inch walk uh, with a one long solid handle instead of these two short handles. And I understand they even did re-release that, wa that uh, walk within the last couple of years or so. On the other, other hand, I have this walk. So, I mean, I, by myself, I live by myself. I have very little reason to um, get another walk, especially since this one has performed so well. This is definitely one of those cast iron pans I'm going to keep with me until I die. And enjoying it, until, probably until I can't lift it anymore, which hopefully won't be for another 20, 30 years yet. Otherwise, yeah, this has a very sweet smell to it at this point, so I'd say we're doing pretty good here. And now, finally, let's get down to some rice, which is, of course, pre-cooked, and I've had it in the fridge. So it's definitely hardened, <laughs> or congealed, I should say. <laughs> Nonetheless, this will actually break up easily when, they, with, when it mixes in with all of this uh, hot food here. Yeah, they say uh, the reason why you want to use pre-cooked rice with your uh, fried rice is because it actually has a different consistency. I mean, freshly made uh, rice is wonderful in itself. Of course, it's fluffy and still has a lot of the starch in it. Whereas after the rice has set for uh, like 24 hours or so, it really, again, it's, uh, has, it has a uh, much different consistency and it's actually better for stir fries for that reason. So I would say that most likely your typical restaurant is, is indeed using uh, not necessarily leftover fried rice, but more like pre-prepared rice. 
which is fine. And this is uh, coming in uh, very easily and very nicely now. Really nothing to it, considering I've already, I've already added the garlic and the ginger to this. So there's definitely going to be some nice flavor to this rice. Especially now, all we have to do is throw in a little bit of the soy sauce. Oh, yes, and if you're going to uh, get soy sauce, um, don't go with the Kiko Man stuff they sell at the supermarket. If you have the opportunity and you can visit, like, say, a Chinese market or stuff or whatever, you can get the real thing, which is um, not expensive at all and definitely much, much more flavorful. This stuff here says mushroom-flavored dark soy sauce. I have no idea even who the, ma the maker is. Pearl River Bridge, it says. <laughs> All I know is that this is, uh, has a much more intense flavor than what you get with the uh, Kiko Man stuff. And if you were talking about dark um, fried rice, well, take a look. I'd say this is definitely dark, but that's because it has mushroom oil in it as well as the actual soy sauce, and it definitely it has a flavor to it. So at this point, uh, I think we can, uh, where did I put it? Here it is. We can put our pork back in. Okay. How are we doing? Oh, yeah, that's right. We still have that rice paper, too. <laughs> and in fact, you know, we can probably use the leftovers from the stir fry. Yeah, and, and make spring rolls. So, yeah, yeah, now that you're saying that, I'm definitely looking forward to that. But, yeah, I mean, this didn't take long at all, even though this is a cheap electric stove. That's okay. We're almost done. That's, a, that's all right. Hmm. That's the stuff I read they use in Boston. <laughs> they sell it at every uh, Chinese market here in the Boston area. As a native Massachusetts person, I was shocked to find Chinese fried rice out of state was so bland. <laughs> well, thank you for telling me. You know, I mean, as I mentioned, I am a born and bred New Englander. I've lived in New England my whole life. And I really, and when I go out of state, I make a point of eating locally, which means, you know, usually not eating Chinese food out of state. <laughs> Uh, the most I can say is that when I was seeing my first girlfriend um, about 10 years ago, in fact, she had really had a thing for seafood and sushi. And so when I was seeing her, I did get a lot of sushi with, with her. I found I don't have much of a palate for sushi myself. It's definitely an acquired taste. There were a couple of kinds that I liked. Most of it I really wasn't crazy about. And I'm only saying that that's me, my own personal taste. <laughs> Uh, I guess we're lucky here in New England in that even though we're in Boston, we have several very good Chinese markets that uh, import, well, directly from Asia. There's the Kamen, um, Kamen Shops in Quincy, south of Boston, which I, is allegedly the biggest uh, Asian uh, market on the entire East Coast. Uh, there's another big Chinese market uh, in the middle of Boston Chinatown and uh, several other decent ones in the uh, Metro West area as well. And finally to this, I'll, well, as I said, we'll just throw in just a tiny bit of this sesame oil. And that's about it. And so just like that, oh yeah, this is definitely smelling like a real stir fry now thanks to that sesame oil so if you notice I and that's really just some basic spices I put in there all I did was maybe I put in salt maybe a little bit more of this white pepper as I mentioned there is uh, minced garlic and ginger in there I could throw in some sesame seeds but I was I've never really been a fond of sesame seed as I said, that's just my personal taste. I mean, a lot of people's tastes different, are, differ, and I'm not going to criticize that. That's just how I am versus how other people are. But nonetheless, we've got ourselves a uh, nice stir fry, and it's as, really as easy as that. Let me check on our comments here. 
Uh, yes, interesting spatula. Yeah, let me get to that. Oh, Glock, what is rice paper? Okay, okay. Well, I've got a couple of things to say right there. Oh, yeah, one thing you have to be careful of is the sodium amount. Yes, that's about all of, that's of that. Uh, what is rice paper? This is rice paper. You know, when you get uh, spring rolls in particular, not even, uh, not even so much those uh, egg rolls, but more like uh, spring rolls and summer rolls. They, they wrap it in this rice paper here. And this stuff is wonderful. And what's more, if you actually go to a uh, Chinese market and you can find this stuff, it is dirt cheap. This package here of about uh, 24 uh, pieces of rice paper only costs about $2. And all you have to do is take a sheet of that and soak in cold water and that's it. You don't even have to cook it, but you can cook it if you want. But anyway, once you do that, it softens and you can roll up your hot food with it and you've got yourself a genuine uh, spring roll or a wrap if you prefer. So, yeah, rice paper is one thing you definitely want to try if you if you ever can. I found that out, and I do not regret it. As for this uh, particular wok spatula, this I have no idea if this is vintage or not. All I know is I found this at the Brimfield Antique Show. Yeah, another Brimfield find, <laughs> and it cost me all of five dollars. It does say made in Hong Kong. So it's definitely the real thing. No, no question about that. It's also much thinner and much lighter than a typical um, wok spatula or chan uh, that, you, that uh, you usually get. And as such, I really like how it, uh, how it works. Um, I am uh, quite happy with, how, uh, uh, with using this. So during these videos, I apologize for the scraping sound, but nonetheless, it really, really... Make, it really feels good to use a wok spatula. Oh, get, I should probably say that right there. If you do not have a wok spatula and you have a wok, then again, you must run, not wok, yuck, 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 and get yourself a wok spatula. These things are made for use in a wok and they feel fantastic. Just if you, I mean, the difference between using this and, and a regular spatula on a wok is incredible. Once you have used one of these, even once in a wok, you will never want to use a regular spatula again with a uh, wok. Spatulas are great. They're great with cast iron pans and griddles and skillets. But if you are using a wok, you really need to use a wok spatula, a chan, C-H-U-A-N. Highly, highly recommended. So yeah, as far as cooking magic goes, I consider this to be one of my magic wands. It is, uh, it feels that good and it definitely, I really enjoy using it. Okay, what do we have here now? Rice paper is edible paper made from rice. Exactly. Loved sushi the first time I tried it. Yeah, everybody's taste is different, and I don't deny that. Notice how the rice doesn't stick. Excellent wok. Yes, that's because this is a good seasoned cast iron wok. Love sesame seeds in my tomato gravy. Mm, that sounds interesting. You convince me I will get a wok spatula. Definitely get a wok spatula because they are cheap. Even at... Um, all I can advise is do not use the plastic ones that they sell at the dollar store. Plastic and cast iron do not mix. <laughs> but if you get yourself a, uh, even a semi-decent wok spatula, you will not regret it. And um, Bookworm73, I am asking you specifically, I mean, to let us know what, how it felt like the first time you tried a uh, wok spatula. I like your food, sir. What size wok is that? Well, once again, this is a large cast iron, 14 inch uh, wok, which is a very nice size. Uh, there's a lot of room in here for doing stir fries. And I found in this case as well for doing stir fries, if you're gonna get a wok, I do advise getting a big one because having a lot of space really, really helps with these stir fries. Um, and one last thing, I guess, and then that's really about it. And that would be a lid. This did not, whoops, this did not come with the, with the wok. I bought this separately at a uh, supplier. However, here's the thing. 
if you're going to get a lid, even though this is a 14 inch wok, you want a lid that's at least an inch or so smaller in diameter so that you can put it on like this, that there will be a lip underneath. That's exactly how you're supposed to uh, put a lid on a wok. And I just thought I'd mention that. Nonetheless, otherwise, I like using two spatulas when I cook fried rice. You might try using, um, yeah, either two. Uh, you could use a wok spatula and a, um, I forget what they call the wok, the other wok shovel, the, the hook. You know, this big round scoop here, which, of course, is massively useful as well for, you know, for ladling out uh, soups and the like. But, yeah, if you use one of these and one of these, you've got yourself an unbeatable combination. And what's more, again, they are, like so many Chinese utensils, they're dirt cheap. You can get them anywhere. If you go to a, any decent um, Chinese um, market, you'll be able to find them in droves. And again, I very, very highly recommend it. In fact, it's time to turn off the heat and take this out because that's really all we need to do for a stir fry here. Yeah, we're really uh, using high quality stuff, aren't we? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, here is our 10th anniversary stir fry. Nice way to celebrate the 10th anniversary of this Lodge cast iron wok. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks to my brother for giving me that gift certificate at just the right time because, yeah, this really fed my, or started my cast iron addiction. As I said, I fell in love with this wok and I'm very, very pleased to have, uh, you know, to be, have been using this for the past 10 years. After this, yeah, the interest really started growing at this point. Uh, after this, the next one, uh, the next cast iron piece I bought was the large double Dutch oven. That's in that I wanted a Dutch oven and I wanted right. something, excuse me, I wanted something that I felt would be the best value for my money. And so I got one with a skillet lid, which I also did not regret. <laughs> Uh, OMG, I grew up with that wood bowl on our table. Oh, yeah, these. Uh, this is yet another thing I bought at a... Uh, also in Boston, there's a really great restaurant supplier, Chinese restaurant supplier in Boston's Chinatown, and I believe it's actually called um, the Great Wall. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, never mind the politics. It's a, it's an amusing name, but it's a wonderful place for restaurant for cooking stuff. You know, I mean, it is literally stacked floor to ceiling with every kind of kitchen gadget you can think of, and tons and tons of plates, bowls, including these wooden bowls in many different sizes as well. <laughs> so, uh, seventies laminated salad bowl. Yeah, that's pretty much yes. <laughs> I but. Uh, it, I still, I still enjoy it. I see no reason not to use it for uh, just about everything. <laughs> uh, Pegtooth, is trouble behind a locked door? As a matter of fact, yes. He and uh, Miss Mobley are keeping Jamie company as, as, again, she's feeling under the weather. That's one of those, another nice things about having house cats, as anybody knows, is that they know when you're sick. And they do like coming to take care of you. Or maybe it's because you're warm and, and so they like lying on you. But either way, it's always nice to uh, be able to cuddle with a cat when you're not feeling well or any other time. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I was, as I said, I was not planning on making this an entire hour this time tonight. That will probably come this uh, following Wednesday, uh, this next Wednesday. By the way, this next Wednesday, for the record, I feel like it's going to be another one of those talk, talk, talk sessions in that, my, in that I'm not even sure if I'm going to cook on Wednesday, but I do want have a topic for uh, this coming Wednesday, and that is ringing the new with new modern cast iron. I feel like let's, uh, let's do some chatting about modern day cast iron makers. That includes Lodge, that includes Finex, Fields, Stargazer, um, 
just about any other uh, manufacturer you want who is uh, producing cast iron today. Uh, because, you know, it's a new year, 2021, and I feel like talking about the new since we are ringing in the new. Oh, uh, do you clean the wok like any other cast iron? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. I've already turned off the heat, and once this thing gets cool enough, I will just use my good old chainmail scrubber and uh, scrub it away. And as you see, this wok has a nice black color, too. I do my best to keep the seasoning uh, good on it, but I just treat, I just clean it exactly the same way I clean all my other cast iron. In fact, I learned about cleaning cast iron with this wok. You know, again, you uh, rinse it, you rinse it off, uh, scrub it off well, and then for me, I put it on the uh, burner to dry for several minutes, and then finally give it a very, very thin and light and barely there coat of uh, Crisco. Some people say that you don't want need to do that last coating of oil. And um, here is the difference, I think, again, is between an electric stove and a gas-fired stove. Because I know with a gas-fired stove, people tend to just uh, dry it off and keep it, and keep it on until it smokes and let it cool and then uh, let it uh, cool down. You really can't do that as well with an electric stove. So maybe that's the difference. Uh, Smithy is another, yes, and butter pat. Anyway, as I said, feel free to uh, bring up all of these new cast iron makers on Wednesday when we uh, talk about bringing in the new. But as I said, I'm, this is uh, kind of an abbreviated one. If you, if you call 40 minutes uh, abbreviated rather than a full hour to an hour and a half. <laughs> Besides, it's Sunday evening and it's back to work tomorrow because the uh, holiday is pretty much over. <laughs> and I can tell things are back to normal here in New England because we are getting several inches of snow just in time for the Monday morning commute. Yep. Things are back to normal. Anyway, that's uh, how it is. And uh, once again, tenth uh, happy 10th birthday or 10th anniversary, I should say, to this LodgeCast Iron Walk. And here's hoping I get to use this for many more. And thank you very much for watching, as always, everybody. As always, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, my constant rambling on and on about with as I, as I do this silly stuff in the kitchen. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I know folks uh, do seem to like this, and I am very much appreciate it because, as always, it's a lot of fun, and it's even more fun when to know that uh, people are watching and enjoying it. Hmm. Uh, Peg Tooth, I have a cast iron sausage press that was repaired decades before I even got it. It's in a shed, and I have no idea what to do with it. Well, I guess we could make sausage, <laughs> although I understand it will probably have to be cleaned up first. <laughs> And thank you very much for everyone. Oh, don't forget the hot mustard sauce. Mm. Yeah, that, uh, I never had hot mustard sauce with, with, a, uh, with a Chinese stir fry. On the other hand, the next time I make South Carolina hash, there will be mustard sauce. And having said that, once again, uh, thank you, everybody. Bookworm, do enjoy your, uh, your uh, walk special when you get it. I will uh, see everybody again. Yeah, I know, too short. <laughs> well, this was kind of like spur of the moment. But uh, again, I will uh, see everybody, I guess, on Wednesday. Uh, unless I, I do have a video I'm working on uh, that I hope to release before then. And uh, as always, thank you once again for watching, everybody. Thank you for coming by. And uh, have a good evening. We're done.